Right, hello. So I've been taking photos since I was 16 and my style of editing those photos throughout the years has changed tremendously. I started off with really bad, cliche, oversaturated sunsets. But after years of in-depth lessons on lighting and colour, I now find myself with more relaxed, somewhat mature tones and hues. <laughs> With all that being said, I thought why not make a video talking you guys through my current photo editing process. Now I understand that there's a lot of back and forth on whether or not a photographer should edit their photos, um, I'm not going to get into all of that. But with me, my style is a lot of grain and like shadows and fades, I suppose you can just call it the film look. If you know me personally then you know that I love to shoot on film rather than digital, it's just that I'm in the Philippines and it's quite hard here to get your film scanned and developed because if you're not in Manila, it may take around a month or two to get it back which is why I shoot on digital and try to edit it to make it look like film. I know for a fact I'm going to get a lot of hate in the photography world because of that. So many photographers are against it, but it's the best I can do. Okay, another thing, unlike a lot of all of the professional photographers out there, I personally choose to edit my photos on my phone rather than my computer or laptop. Don't get me wrong, I have no problem with Lightroom or Photoshop. It's fantastic software, especially when you need to do some more advanced editing such as split toning. Uh, I don't find myself needing to do that quite a lot, which is why I resort to my phone and it's free. I use this app called Snapseed. It's a free app. I believe it's owned by Google. Around a week or two ago, I uploaded a photo shoot that I did with my lovely girlfriend, Michelle. A lot of you guys liked those photos, so I thought why not use those photos as an example for this video. Okay, so right now we're on the Snapseed app. This is the first thing you see once you upload a photo. There's Michelle there chilling on her bed. And I actually really liked this photo because I didn't plan to shoot this. What I mean by that is I was actually setting up my camera at the time to get the right exposure. And I did like a test and Michelle actually posed for it there by sticking her tongue out a wee bit. I actually just really liked this pose and the photo and everything about it but as you can tell I was still trying to like find my exposure here. If you can look at the right side there where the window is you can see that it's slightly overexposed. Not crazy, it's not too bad you don't really notice it but it does bother me and on top of that my framing's a bit off you can see like her poster peeking through the top of the photo there. So those are the first two things that stick out to me that I want to fix. What I always do first is I go on tools here and I click on tune image on the top left. And what tune image is, is essentially just playing around with the shadows, the brightness, the highlights, and really trying to even out your image here when it comes to exposure. Okay, first thing I would usually touch is shadows or highlights. I don't like touching brightness too much because I think it has too much power and I don't like that. On the left side of the frame, it's quite dark compared to the right. And I will just go back and forth. As you can see, as I put the shadows higher, her face gets way more exposed, but you don't want to go too high because then her hair just looks very fake like that. So around somewhere in the 20s or mid 20s looks good there. I go with 24. And highlights after that. Um, this is quite tricky with the highlights because the right side is very overexposed and I don't like that and it's quite hard to balance it out with the highlights. So what I'm looking at right now is the wall behind her. As if you can see the wall changes. So what a lot of this is, is just trial and error. You move your finger about and then you stop when you see what you like. Not too far from the shadows either, maybe like 20-ish. That looks good for me. You see I go back to shadows because I don't like it after I change the highlights. So I just try to balance it out again. Okay, that seems good. I go back to tune image later but I'll save this for now. And as you can see, there's already quite a difference there when it comes to the exposure. It's a lot brighter now and you can see the details more. Fun fact, with film, you want to overexpose to get the details back, but with digital, you want to underexpose because it's quite harder to achieve the details if you overexpose on digital, which is why, as you can see here, I shot it quite low with my exposure. It was a wee bit dark and I edited it to be a bit brighter here because I can just show the details more. Whereas if I overexposed in real life, editing it, I will lose those details. So just remember, film, overexpose, digital underexposed okay that's that way you don't lose your details okay now i would dun, 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 try and go to crop and here are different ratios you can find on crop um i'd say the safest one is three by two 16 by nine is mainly for videos 7.52 square two square two square uh, i just don't want to get the top in there which is why i even it out there and i'll just get in the middle there we go that looks good to me it's already looking much better okay so this is the secret to a lot of my photography this is the entire secret behind getting the film look on snapseed anyway you can do this manually it'll take much longer it's quite easy to do manually but if you want something like a preset this is where you go you go to tools you go to grainy film under tools 
and as you can see there's just loads and loads of presets you can choose from when it comes to film looks so my go-to is bo3 and lo2 um, right now we're in bo3 lo2 this is the other one i quite like i use bo3 the most because it's just more subtle everything else is like too tacky and too much of the film look like you're trying to get the film look the whole secret to editing is you have to edit to make it look like it's not edited okay so i'm going to stick with bo3 because lo2 is just way too strong for me and i'm gonna take down the grain a wee bit to where it looks subtle and real i like that that looks good the style strength is the style of the, the filter preset you use and it starts off at 80 but i kind of like it at 63 right there that looks good so this is before the grainy preset or grainy filter and afterwards it looks like that it's already looking a lot like a film photo the right side's still a wee bit overexposed but not too crazy i also really like how the light is hitting her covers there near her legs all right so now that we have the main exposure edited and the grain film look inputted into the photo i then go back to tune image to make my final touches and another big secret i have with my film photos film photos is i really love the warm look so i go down to warmth and i blast that up probably around there i quite like that there you go and then i'll play around with the shadows and the highlights again i might even touch ambience a few times ambience see that see how it makes the details just way stronger on ambience especially on her face if you if you keep an eye on michelle's face as i increase the ambience it just shows the details way more as well as her right leg so there we go and that pretty much looks good to me the way i top it off is i go to details and i use the sharpening tool structure is a wee bit too much for me i don't like it it's like way too strong so i go to sharpening somewhere around 10 is the way i always go i'm pretty sure i'm done now um might touch the highlights up a wee bit more because it's looking a bit bright but yeah that's essentially it if you want you can go to your frames here and add a nice white frame i personally love white frames it looks great so far sorry i just it looks so much better right now and that's pretty much the first photo edited there and i actually was a bit bothered by this photo first because she has a lot of headroom here but the arts and crafts she has on the top left side make up for it it gives you something to look at now this is something i edited really fast for you guys but in reality i would go back and forth with this one for like maybe 20 to 30 minutes then last but not least you export your photo all right so next up we have this lovely photo of michelle laying in bed here as soon as i took this photo as soon as i saw my frame or even before that i knew that i wanted this specific shot to be in black and white it's one of those photos where you just you just know so to get started we go right to tune image and like i said earlier it's quite hard to balance your exposures here with the dynamic range because the background is quite blasted again due to the window and her face is literally against the light so it's quite dark on her face i try to balance that out with the highlights and shadows again highlights i want to take it down a wee bit there we go around negative four negative five again i'm going to adjust these later on but i just want something to start off with like a basis shadows definitely increase it because i want her face to be exposed a wee bit more there we go we might touch ambience just now just to see what it looks like there we go again on her face strong ambience on her face there revealing the details and i like the color the colors coming through but again not too important because we're going to make this black and white i'll save that and boom as i said it's going to be a black and white photo so go to tools you can do this manually by taking down the saturation and um, changing the contrast and such but snapseed has an option here called black and white you click that and you can get different types of black and white photos here dark in sky film dark um bright contrast neutral and i know you'd guess that i'd go for the film option because i'm into the whole film look but i don't like this one because i think it's just too tacky and it's too strong so what i usually go for is contrast or neutral neutral looks good and what i can do is i can keep it neutral then go back to tune image and change the shadows and contrast there but i'm pretty sure i want to go with contrast because i believe i can make the majority of the changes here so go to contrast change the up a wee bit I'm mainly looking at Michelle's face here because that's the center of the photo. And I know that if the face is right, then the majority of the photo will be good. Okay, there we go. And as you can see here on contrast, there's also a grain option. I'll touch that later on. I'll leave it just like that. That's a good start for me when it comes to editing the black and white feature. So I'll save that. And then I'll go back to tune image. 
right off the bat you can see how it's a nice space to start off because it's not too strong it's not too flat and i plan to go to shadows add it by two percent ambience again i'll save that very minor changes then i will go again to grainy film you may ask why i didn't use the grain option on the contrast in the black and white tab <clears throat> and that's because on grainy film you have the style strength option and you don't have that on the black and white tab so i will take down the style option quite a bit because i don't want it too much what i mainly like about the style option is the fade to it so i am going to so i'm going to boost that to like 19. grain i'll take that down a lot Fun fact, if you guys aren't too aware of what grain is on film photos, grain is literally silver specks. If you like seriously zoom in to a film negative, you will just see that they are literally just grey specks. And I don't know what it is, but I just love how grain looks on skin. It's very beautiful, especially with the sunlight there and the warm tones. The way grain hits the skin, it pops very nicely. Increasing the grain a wee bit, and I'll save that. Before and after so far, this is what we have. I'm quite liking it. The face is a wee bit dark for me. So I'm going to touch up the shadows. Actually, I might leave the shadows alone and just go to ambience. There we are. And even though it's black and white, I will add some warmth here because it will change the look of the black and white photo. And I love warmth. I like the little faded black and white look. Even something very small like plus seven or plus five okay there we go and lastly as you all know we finish off with detail sharpening when you're shooting a person always look at their eyes when you're trying to make sure if the photo or image is sharp so if their eyes are sharpened then you know that the photos are in focus okay as i said earlier you can add a frame there we go i hope you like to see what i mean by this photo just screaming that it needs to be in black and white so yeah that's something you just need to keep an eye out for just knowing how you're going to edit your photos export right so last but definitely not least is probably one of the harder photos to edit it's michelle here on a stool sipping some juice but i love how everything looks here the problem is the photo that i took because it's not even as you can tell it's quite wonky i didn't shoot this on a tripod and i just don't like how it's very uneven and that's the main problem that screams out to me here so that's what i really want to fix but of course first you go to tools tune image uh shadows I kind of, it's, it's quite looking, it's looking a wee bit flat. I want to increase it a wee bit though. You can see the difference on her legs and the jeans. That's where you can see the main shadow difference. There we go. Highlights again. If you did a shoot in a room with white walls and you're editing the highlights, take a look at the white walls in the background because that's where you can like really see the difference. Either the walls or the face, probably both. There we go. And that looks good to me. Warmth, I'll touch that later. Ambience. Yeah, I can touch that now. Why not? Just a wee bit. Give me something to start with and work with. Okay, that looks good there. I'll save that for now. Next up, I'm going to go to rotate because as I said earlier, I don't know why I didn't evenly shoot this. I have a, something's wrong with me. So I'm just going to adjust that a wee bit. What I'm looking at here is Michelle and the grid definitely does help. There you go. It's a wee bit better already. Next up, we can go to our grainy film tab and be on BO3 or LO2. Again, I choose BO3 all day, every day. Take the grain down quite a bit because it's just far too strong for me here. Her face is looking quite dark, so I'm gonna take this strength down. Okay, that's looking better. But as you notice, right after you add in the grain effect and the style strength, you're gonna have to readjust your shadows and highlights again, as well as your colors. So shadows are too dark for me. Wanna increase that. Highlights a wee bit too as well. Highlights here are tricky because the white wall is very prominent. It's quite hard to even out Michelle the bags and the white wall. So I'm not trying to touch highlights too much. Ambience, yes. Ambience is your friend here. Last but not least, put in the warmth. I find a lot of the times that warmth is what makes the photo. Where it all comes together, for me at least. Again, it's trial and error. So you just change what you think needs to be changed. You play around with it. Okay, so that looks good to me for now. Boom, massive difference already. You, you see what I mean by the warmth? It changes the the whole mood of the photo last but not least add your details in sharpen that you can go to tools again and add a frame boom 
and there you have it of course you can go back and forth just a heads up though if you're gonna go back and change the colors and the lighting of your photo make sure you remove the frame first because that's gonna affect the white of the frame as well but that's pretty much it you zoom in here you see all the details in the clothes you see the details in the grain and how the grain affects everything it's beautiful personally what i would do again when shooting this photo if i were to reshoot it i would put the headroom down a wee bit i don't like how michelle has a wee bit too much room above her head here export as you saw from the b-rolls of this video i actually took the time to print the photos i took of michelle i really did love this shoot a massive thank you to michelle my lovely girlfriend for being my model here personally i love this photo the most because it was genuine michelle was actually laughing i managed to capture that with her playing with her thumbs and her mouth and everything i thought it was very very cute we did a rooftop one for one of them i used a black frame i quite like how i used the black frame here and i love how in the background you can see the purple flowers popping off the green trees it really complements what she's wearing here i also love the contrast between her red nails and the blue polo shirt as well as her blue sunglasses another favorite photo of mine is her standing or jumping on the bed here one thing i really loved about this day was that the sun wasn't very prominent and it was actually quite overcast that day but the way the light hit her bed was very beautiful it really highlighted the green and white covers especially like the the red base of the bed and what i loved about that was that it was quite highlighted in the center of the frame but everything around especially in the corners of the frame were quite dark uh, like i said i posted these photos on instagram a few weeks ago and it got a lot of love so thank you guys so much make sure you guys check out my instagram at kafri cameron michelle's instagram mcnish michelle and i really hope you enjoyed this video i'm very excited for this new channel of mine where i primarily discuss photography and film i have a lot more videos lined up a lot more videos planned and i'm so so excited thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time